an impact. I really wanted to see how strong these bull bars really are, so I thought I'd take the camera crew in behind the scenes here to see how the testing's done on these bull bars. Now, you simply won't believe the design, the engineering, and the testing involved just to make a simple bar for the front of your four-wheel drive. In this video, we're gonna show you exactly what goes into making a bull bar, which after seeing what TJM do here in Brisbane, I'll tell you now, it'll blow you away. The front skin that you see is about a tenth of what goes into one of these things. We're going to show you the incredible engineering that goes into these bars that you've probably never seen before. Bars get tested for so many reasons. To get ADR and airbag compliance, to ensure their winch frames and recovery points are rated to what they need to be for us four-wheel drivers, and to ensure they hold up when you hit something like a kangaroo with one on the front. Now have a go at this contraption behind me. I've never seen anything like this before. It's a massive big pendulum that's designed to swing down and crash into that bar. Now this test actually serves two purposes. Number one, it shows that the airbags won't be detonated in a minor crash. And number two, that the bar's designed to crumple the way it should in a crash. Watch as the pendulum hits the bar. The engineering team can measure the force and how the bar is done at reducing the load that goes through the chassis. These slots in the chassis mounts are extremely important in a crash. When the bar is mounted, it's fitted at the furthest forward point in these slots. Because as you can see, when the pendulum hits it, or you have a frontal impact, the bar will slide back like this. The mount is designed like this to reduce force. By measuring the force going through the chassis, the engineering team are ensuring there's not enough force to set the airbags off in the vehicle in a low speed crash, but enough for them to go off when they're meant to. Holy heck, that was quite an impact. Now, just having a look at the, the bar and the chassis here, you can see what happened on that impact is, it's actually that the bar and also the winch cradle supports here have taken the majority of the impact. Now, that's bent and it slid back on those um, slides the way it should as well. Now, the reason it does that, of course, is it takes a lot of the impact so the chassis and the vehicle doesn't. Now, in a pinch, you'd probably have to guess that this vehicle would be able to drive on its own steam after this sort of crash. Now, because the radiator sits behind this um, support right here, so chances are it wouldn't have been touched at all. Um, there might have been a few little dents on the bonnet, but at the end of the day, this vehicle will be able to drive home on its own steam. Good to know if you're out in the outback or something like that and you went through a crash just like that one. And check out what they do to measure high-speed crashes. Again, the goal is to see the bar crumple, just like the vehicle is made to do, to ensure that you're as safe as you can possibly be in a big crash. Now, of course, bull bars aren't just useful in frontal impacts or pranks and things like that. They're also very useful in four-wheel driving applications. This machine right here is TJM's load testing machine. It load tests things like recovery points and winch cradles to make sure they can handle a lot more load than what they're rated at. Check this out. We've mounted the recovery points and the winch frame to this load cell, which will measure the load as the hydraulic ram applies force. Look at that. We can get to a full eight tonne without even a mark on the points or any damage to the winch frame at all. Now, one of the ways TJM's able to achieve this is this extra bracing here along the chassis of their bars, which gives it so much more strength. In fact, TJM's one of the only bull bar manufacturers to actually incorporate factory uh, recovery points into their bars. Now the next test we're gonna look at is a corrugation simulation whereby we drive this D-Max down a series of ladders. Now, I want you to pay special attention to how much the body moves on the chassis. Watch just how much movement there is between the chassis and the cab of this four-wheel drive. No, that's not the bar wobbling. Every four-wheel drive has movement between the chassis and the cab because the bar is hard mounted to the chassis. It shows off just how much the cab moves on the mounts. TGM does this to ensure the clearance on the bar and body is big enough to handle this movement and it won't rub or damage the body. In 2021, Barwork manufacturers have a whole new issue to navigate in terms of safety and design, technology. Every new four-wheel drive hitting the market now is coming with more sensors, cameras that'll help you break in emergencies, lane departure assist, and every other technology under the sun. All of them rely on the sensors and cameras at the front of the vehicle. Now, companies like TJM need to figure out a way to ensure all these features work like factory 
even with their bar work on. In terms of design and engineering, those vehicles with the most technology are certainly harder to develop a bar for. This is Zuzu D-Max. TJM reckon that the brand new bar for that doesn't affect the technology at all. Let's put it to the test. We're gonna test the auto emergency braking with and without the TJM bar work by driving at this hatchback and hoping the car pulls us up. You can see it works exactly how Zuzu intended it to. TJM spent hours driving, analyzing, and testing all the technology on these vehicles to understand exactly how it works before the bar is even fitted to it. There's so much to a bull bar than just what you see on the outside. In fact, the testing doesn't stop just here. What happens when there's a proper animal strike or frontal impact? Well, TJM head bush and show us exactly what happens. The kangaroo impact test um, on our frontal protection systems. Just give you guys a bit of a look at what we do behind the scenes as part of testing for TJM. This kangaroo, well, he's, he's not a real kangaroo, but we've made him out of um, a, a pretty bright colour just to make it easier for our driver to see him. We made him up with ballistics gel. We've got a ballistics score in there and weighted him up to 45 kilograms. This is an average size kangaroo. We're going to impact him at 80 kilometres an hour. Um, we're going to simulate traveling at 100 kilometres an hour and braking for a kangaroo and hitting him on the passenger side of the vehicle, just outside of the, the chassis uh, mounts on the vehicle. We're going to run through this test again with an unprotected vehicle. We've seen the TJM equipped vehicles go through and come out pretty well through this test. And it's the same kangaroo, same weight, same speeds, same test. And let's see what happens. As you can see, the Excel has taken a pretty big hit. The vehicle is now immobilized. The TJM vehicles, even the 200 series without sidebars, only suffered minor cosmetic damage. All of these vehicles will have no problem getting you home from your adventure. Well, if you ask me, that's putting bull bars to the ultimate test. It's so refreshing to see an Aussie company like TJM doing all the testing, design work, prototypes, even manufacturing a fair few of their bull bars right here in Australia. And it's one of the reasons why they can go to market first with a new bar for a new four wheel drive. And it's also one of the reasons why I decided to go one for my big 200 and Graham chose one for his D-Max as well. Now, thanks for watching this show. I hope you learned something. I certainly did. It's been an epic day, especially the destruction testing to see how much engineering goes behind the humble bull bar. It's a lot more than just a pretty thing on the front of your four wheel drive. There's so much R&D involved. Now, if you've got any questions, like I said before, make sure you put them in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe our channel, and I'll see you next time on Four Wheel Drive 24-7.